Hi everyone, Lady with the Lisp here. Tonight I'm just going to read uh, a selection of poetry by a man named Samuel Griswold Goodrich. He's better known by his pen name Peter Parley. It's just a couple of selections that I've picked uh, that I thought were interesting. I don't know much about this poet, um, but as most of you know I'm a university student and I'm studying English and History with for my Bachelor of Arts, they're my majors. And poetry uh, is something that I've been a bit into for writing my own and if you are interested I'm happy to read my own um, out loud. Um, I've submitted them to be published in a magazine in Canada which I'm waiting to hear uh, which poem and when it will be published which is you know hopefully fingers crossed I'll hear back soon. Um, and I just wanted to go into a bit about why I made this page really. Um, so part of my studies we were we were researching places to publish our work um, and looking up different types of magazines and podcasts and you know where, where we can publish things and where we can read things. Um, and my nan is blind, so I spent quite a bit of time searching for, you know, um, blind pod pe podcasts for blind people or, you know, radio stations just for blind people. And look, I, I didn't really find anything. And I would, if people know anything about that or know anywhere, I would love to see it. Um, you know, she is a member of Vision Australia, so she gets access to all the audio books. But... You know, uh, ecphatic poetry and, you know, just uh, so ecphatic poetry is about uh, describing, you know, like a painting or an image, but in poetry. Um, and I, you know, really enjoyed writing my own versions of, you know, ecphatic poetry. So, you know, I, I kind of feel that, uh, you know, as a disabled person myself, um, I feel that there should be more options um, and so you know for people like my nan so besides just listening to a bunch of audio books that she could and and you know some old crappy songs in the news there could be you know selections of poetry or or other stories or you know uh, descriptive really descriptive um, you know things of art um, and you know I think it's important that those things are available so that's sort of why I started this um, I really like I said I couldn't find anywhere that was specially made just to you know just for blind people to listen to a podcast or something um, yeah but I, I've selected a few poems by this fella um, obviously in the public domain so the, the everything I'm reading either there's permission being posted to read them or they're in the public domain which means I'm free to read them aloud for you guys um, and do as I wish with them. No, that's mainly because of the age of the poetry or the novels such as Pride and Prejudice. Um, but yeah, so I'll get on with it. So this one's called Song. The Robin At misty dawn, at rosy morn, The red breast sings alone, At twilight dim, Still, still, his hymn, Hath a sad and sorrowing tone. Another day his song is gay, For a listening bird is near. O ye who sorrow, come borrow, borrow, A lesson of Robin here. Right, and then the next one's titled A Burial at Sea. The shore hath blent with the distant skies o'er the bend of the crested seas, and the learning ship in her leaning ship in her pathway flies on the sweep of the freshened breeze. Swift be its flight for a dying guest it bears across the billow, and she fondly sighs in her native west to find a peaceful pillow. There, o'er the tide, her kindred sleep, and she would sleep beside them. It may not be, for the sea is deep, 
and the waves, the waves divide them. It may not be for the flush is flown that lighted her lily cheek. Twas the passing beam ere the sun goes down, life's last and loveliest streak. Tis gone, and a dew is over her now, the dew of the mournless eve. No morrow will shine on that pallid brow, for the spirit hath taken its leave. The ship heaves to, and the funeral rite o'er the lovely form is said, and the rough man's cheek with tears is bright as he lowers the gentle dead. The corse sinks down, alone, alone, to its dark and dreary grave, and the soul on a lightened wing hath flown to the world beyond the wave. Tis a fearful thing in the sea to sleep, alone in a silent bed. Tis a fearful thing on the shoreless deep of the spirit world to tread. Right, and something a bit more cheerful. This one's titled The Leaf. It came with spring's soft sun and showers, mid bursting buds and blushing flowers. It flourished on the same light stem. It drank the same clear dews with them. The crimson tints of summer morn, that gilded one did each adorn. The breeze that whispered light and brief, to bud or blossom, kissed the leaf. When o'er the leaf the tempest flew, the bud and blossom trembled too. But its companions passed away, and left the leaf to lone decay. The gentle gales of spring went by, the fruits and flowers of summer die. The autumn wind swept o'er the hill, and winter's breath came cold and chill. The leaf now yielded to the blast, and on the rushing stream was cast. Far, far it glided to the sea, and whirled and eddied wearily, till suddenly it sank to rest and slumbered in the ocean's breast. Thus life begins its morning hours, bright as the birthday of the flowers. Thus passes like the leaves away, as withered and as lost as they. Beneath the parent roof we meet, in joyous groups and gaily greet, the golden beams of love and light that dawn upon the youthful sight. But soon we part, and one by one, like leaves and flowers, the group is gone. One gentle spirit seeks the tomb, his brow yet fresh with childhood's bloom. Another treads the paths of fame, and barters peace to win a name. Another still tempts fortune wave, and seeking wealth secures a grave. The last grasps yet the brittle thread, though friends are gone and joy is dead. Still dares the dark and fretful tide, and clutches at its power and pride, till suddenly the waters sever, and like the leaf, he sinks forever. Well, the leaf uh, wasn't as happy as I thought it would be. Um, but I really, really enjoyed those. Uh, I think they were quite, quite beautiful, actually. Um, and I'm definitely interested in having a look and reading some more of Peter Parley or Samuel Gris Griswold Goodrich's poems. Um, I'll be doing Pride and Prejudice in the next couple of days, the next couple of chapters. Um, if you have any hints, tips, tricks, anything you'd like to see, um, that would be fantastic. Leave a comment below and feel free to share with everyone. Thanks. Bye.